Hallo, Retro-Fans. So, since the live stream from uh, yesterday has worked quite fine, I decided to, well, do something like this again, but this time I picked a topic that uh, is waiting in my shelf for weeks now and uh, I was so excited to get this uh, channel donation from Adam uh, and um, I had to send this to a different address to uh, well ensure that I'm going to receive it uh, because I had some troubles uh, here on the site where I am um, when I'm uh, well at work so to say <laughs> and uh, the thing is that um, he has sent me um, an Acorn Electron and uh, it was working on his side but it's not working on my side on the uh, canal and uh, therefore it's a little bit strange that it is working in the UK but not working in Germany but uh, I think we are going to figure out what's going to be the problem hopefully with this little one and uh, bring it back to life so let's get started So, and uh, as usual, let's jump to my desk to see what's what's going on today. So this is actually the Acorn Electron. I think most of you are um, remembering this uh, little computer. And uh, it was always um, on my list of things I really want to have because I simply love the design. It is a, uh, it is compact. It has a really fantastic uh, layout of the keys and uh, the the graphics are really uh, fine. And size-wise, this is exactly how I wish every let's say 8-bit computer should be. So compared to the C64, um, as we can see, this indeed a kind of huge computer <laughs> not to talk about the Amigas or something like this but the Amiga 600 for example is a cute one as well but um, size wise as I said the Acorn Electron is very impressive design wise and uh, yeah and uh, I have expressed uh, my my wish to get a working version during I think some more or less accidental uh, Twitter conversation or something like this and um, Adam came up with the idea to send me um, his one because it was somewhere waiting in some boxes sort of unused and uh, he thought that perhaps makes a bit more sense to well contrib contribute this to uh, my project and uh, yeah, I was really keen. <laughs> I did some some unboxing. I even have a video somewhere about this. And um, I um, went through all the, let's say, pre-startup checks. I checked the power supply. I even had to order an adapter for using the original UK power adapter here in Germany because we have a different socket design. And uh, well, everything looked so f looked fine so far. I connected it to my frame master and started it up, and uh, I was more or less, let's say, kind of um, seeing a picture like this. So, kind of disappointment indeed. I mean, I have to admit, I, <laughs> I have expected a working version, but uh, well. Now I got a project, so to say, and uh, today um, I'd like to go through uh, the Acon Electron uh, service manual just to see if this is of any help and if this is going to 
uh, fix the issue we have here right now. And if not, well, we may have to dig a little bit deeper and uh, see what's going on on this um, little computer. So, as I've said, I did most of the uh, pre-startup checks already, but uh, well, let's work ourselves down the list of the service manual. So as a first thing, I like to switch off this whole computer and um, let's measure the power of the power supply. And this is an AC power supply and this should provide about 19 volt. I'm just a bit confused that I have already some power on it. So, ah, oh, okay. So it's, it's actually measuring something that I may doubt what my power supply is showing me. But we got a 20 volt DC, a 20 volt AC. That's totally fine without any load. So I assume that's going to be okay. I'm still a bit confused why it is showing already something without being connecting to the whole thing except by air. Let's get even more interesting that's may that's maybe something i have to investigate and uh, well as the next thing we have to go inside this computer to check the power supply hi lord anthrax <laughs> thanks for joining interesting nickname i hope or well, i guess it's going to mean something else and not this uh poison or whatever it is called So, school trial. I was expecting that they get out of it. Yes, they do. They do. Not all of them. That's strange, isn't it? Okay, what is this going to open up? So now we have to be a bit careful because there is this um, sort of fragile keyboard connector, ribbon cable, or well, it's not really a ribbon cable, it's more like some foil with some copper. Here we go. So let's put this aside. And now we have a look at the inside of the Archon. And um, this is even cuter, so to say, <laughs> than uh, the C64 board. Uh, I mean, it is very simple in design. So they really crammed most of the uh, functionality in this ULA chip here. And this was uh, causing them a lot of headache as well and uh, may have prevent an even bigger success of the Electron. And um, yeah, so let's see, see what the power supply is doing. 
Oh, hi, Adam. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Thanks for the mention. Well, indeed, I mean, uh, you have sent me this, so it is just uh, fair enough to mention this. And uh, we're supposed to have some DC power here on this connector, and it's supposed to be 5 volt and minus 5 volt. So we got 5 volt on this line. And we got minus 5 volt on the other line. That's fine. And then there are some additional um, 8, 18 volt AC power supply here, but this is actually just powering the expansion port. But uh, we can take a measure here as well, just to be on the safe side that we have checked everything. And we got almost the same 20 volt we have measured on the barrel plug. So I think that's going to be fine as well. So step one, measure voltage output from main power adapter with adapter plugged into electron. Okay, well, we did this basically, but uh, I mean, we can repeat this. and measure those two connectors here. And now we have some load on it and we can see that the voltage is a little bit lower than without any load. So that's fine, check. So is voltage greater than 17? Volt RMS, indeed it is. So, remove connector from PCB, connect 10 ohm 2.5 watt resistor across red and black leads and measure voltage across the resistor. Um, well, this is something I do not have in house, <laughs> but uh, let's assume that um, this is basically almost the same. Uh, resistance the Archon Electron is maybe having. So if we measure this connected to it, then we should get a, quite a similar result. So they want us to use the red and the black lead. Okay. Red and black, this order. And we got 4.99 volt. Is voltage 5 volt plus minus 0.25 volt? It is. Check. So, remove resistor and measure current drawn by main PCB from 5 volt supply. Oh, that's going to be complex. Um, how we can now we can do this. We have to connect this to this, but have to interrupt one. So let's see if we can remove this. Yeah, it is working. Then we can connect this again. And then we go to current mode and measure what's in between. It doesn't matter. So we can see it is drawing 0.7 ampere from the power supply. And the question is, is current 800 milliampere plus minus 100 milliampere. It is. Check. Finish. Okay. First step done. Let's move to the next page. So. What did this say? Oscillator. Okay. Okay. 
is 16 MHz 4 volt peak to peak on pin 49 IC1. Okay, let's figure out what's going to be pin 49 on IC1. I just was looking for my glasses. Sometimes a little bit hard to find your glasses if you do not have them already. But it's actually not so bad. <laughs> so, and we're going to need an oscilloscope. Okay. And I think that's totally fine to go into one channel mode. And we do not need this. And we may have to add some measures. Channel one, add frequency and peak to peak. Yep, nope. Oh, are oh, they? They are. Okay. I see one. So I found I see two, I see three, I see one is the ULA. Okay. So we start with the, uh, I think we may have to reconnect the five volt line before we do so. Otherwise it may affect our results a little bit. So pin one. Now it would be interesting in which direction they count. <laughs> if it's <laughs> clockwise or counterclockwise, I assume it's going to be counterclockwise. So let's see if we can get some ground connection here without creating a shortcut on ourselves. And then we have to go for pin 49, which is actually something with some more magnification. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen pins, that's interesting. So we got thirty or that's more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we got uh, 34. And we have to measure on uh, 49. So we got 40, 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the Third to last pin on this side. So now let's see how we can get our probe connected to this. Not showing something. So we may have to get rid of this protection pin and see if we manage to contact. It's clipping to the next pin. And we got the uh, ready confuse measurement. We got 16 megahertz with four volt peak to peak. So that's perfect. That's absolutely fine. That's what, what we are looking for. So. Disconnect this. Back. Next page. And this is 
So, on the IC1, I guess. All pins 9, 33, 38 at 5 volt. So, since we have figured out where pin 49 is, we know where pin 48 is as well. I'm just looking for a good ground connection because I'm a bit nervous about this one since my, my grabber is a bit too huge and it may create a shortcut on this side. And um, that's indeed nothing we want. But there isn't a good point on uh, the power supply either, except between those wires. Let's see if this is going to work. I'm going to connect this directly. Ah, uh, it's as close as that. It's actually looking quite fine. Okay, I think we can go on with this. And we want to see 5 volts on pin 48. Supposed to be this one. And for this we need to add an additional measure. Add. The... <laughs> Okay, I think this is what we are looking for. We got 5 volt on this pin. Then we have to check pin 33, that's 5 down the row. 48, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. That's this one. We got what did I miscount now? 43, 48. Uh, let's come from the other side. 1, 35, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3. This one. That's supposed to be nine, uh, 5 volt, and it isn't. Interesting. I think we found the first issue. And then we have to check pin 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's also not 5 volt. And pins 51 and 68 supposed to be ground. So Disconnect this and go to trace mode and uh, 51. So we ended up at uh, 34, 44, 51. That's in the corner here. Supposed to be ground? Nope, it isn't. I miscount something. Interesting. Thirty-four, forty-four, fifty-one. That's supposed to be in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, 
So let's click 68. That's fine. So 68 minus 17 is supposed to be 51. What do I have? Well, I'm mis miscalculating something. Let me draw this quickly. Got a feeling we're going to need this <laughs> even a bit more often today, perhaps. So well, that's 1 to 17, 18 to 34, 35 to 51. Ah, oh, I was measure measuring the wrong pin, wasn't I? Probably. So that's supposed to be 52, 64. Okay, so, well. Some simple math I got wrong. <laughs> yep, so ground is working. So we have a couple of uh, things that aren't working the way we want this. So, and it was actually 33. Forty-three and forty-eight. No, it was pin pin nine that wasn't working. Pin nine. Check power supply eight point one. We did so and resistor R five R fifty-eight. So. R5, supposed to be this one. That's a very low value. So now we have to check the value of this one. It's a bit shiny, a little hard to read. So we got four bands. First one is red, second one is yellow, and the third one is black. And the last one would be simply the tolerance. And that's gold. Or something like this, yeah, probably. So we get 24 ohms. Well, it's a little bit lower than this, but it is uh, not lonely. It's not that we are measuring it alone. I think there are some electronics all around that may lower the value of this. And here we got 58. I just found it accidentally. That's 15 ohm, and uh, they are not saying in the manual what the value is supposed to be. That's uh, interesting. Look for broken tracks. Okay, that's <laughs> uh, quite simple, so to say. Then for this we have to remove the board from the case, but uh, that's something that was probably going to happen anyway, so let's go for it. Actually pretty quiet in the channel and in the chat right now. 
I may have to get some coffee to stay awake if this is <laughs> probably a bit too boring. So, did I miss one? Oh no, we have to remove the here and then I'm supposed to get this out of the board or out of the case. And now we're supposed to find some broken traces. Well, that's funny, isn't it? So let me give you a different view on my desk. That was actually the wrong. Maybe you spot it earlier than I do. Ah, it's not a 4K video, so I'm sorry for this. <laughs> and they said, okay, resistor 5 and 48, these are located here. And we got a 5 volt connection from here to here. That's fine. And then we got another one only on this side, between here and here. That's going to be tricky to find out. I assume that the uh, pin nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's fine. And uh, the other pin was forty three. Has been on this side. So thirty five. I'm actually a bit confused. Now we have so many more pins on the bottom side of the board. How, the, how are they all counted? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's fifty one. I'm not wrong right now. No, probably not. Fifty one, that's the last pin on this side. There we have, ah no, 51 was actually the last pin on this side. And it's supposed to be connected to R58. That's strange. Because it isn't. So maybe it's not connected to this one, but to this one. No, neither. The thing that really confuses me is that this is actually not <laughs> the computer Adam has sent me. This is the Archon Electron I have uh, bought quite a long time ago, a year or more. And uh, what really struck me right <laughs> is 
because the ULA here is socket. And Adam told me that he has sent me an Acorn Electron with a non-socket ALU, but with a solderit ALU. And I think I'm really sorry for this, for, for mixing things up. I think this is the Acorn Electron Adam has sent me. <laughs> so I hope you guys don't mind if I continue with this one <laughs> and then we come back to Adams uh, anytime soon. But uh, well, <laughs> this could happen uh, because I was starting to compare those uh, two machines and uh, to see if there, there are some similarities. And uh, by whatsoever reason, I picked the wrong one for this video. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so anyway, we still got the issue that um, I was simply measuring the wrong pin. So pin 43 is supposed to be connected to one of the resistors. Now we're making some sense out of it. And um, that's basically 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, O oh, one two three. That's supposed to be this one, and here we go the connection as well. So that's fine. So why the heck do we not have five volt on these pins? Let's remove the ULA and see if we have five volt on the pins. Then. For this we need some power again. <laughs> so at least I I caused some reaction in the chat. <laughs> Good to know you're still alive. And I think at the end of the day it would be nice to get this one back. And then we take care about the other. So, and once again, counting. But I think we can measure the uh, resistor directly because we've learned that they are connected. So let's see what's here. Five volt, that's fine. Five volt as well. On both sides. Right for the sake of the exercise, one, a five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, three, five volt, and here it was pin nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five volt as well. So it looks like the ULA is drawing more power than it is supposed to be. And maybe that's the issue why the 5 volt line is so low. So let's reinsert it. Just need to figure out which way. I think this way. Yep, it's nice. Okay. Troubleshoot and comedy. Well, even if I can't fix this, <laughs> we had at least some entertainment. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, three. Let's measure this again. Two volt. That's a bit too low. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Two world as well. So, and the menu is saying check power supply. We did so, and resistors R5, R45, with 55, uh, 58. We did so as well. Look for broken tracks. We did so. Is 16 megahertz clock input present at pin 49? 9 is 51, 50, 49 here. Yes, it is. And then they say substitute known good ULA. It looks like uh, our journey with at least this one ends here because I do not have a uh, good, how they call it, substitute good known, a known good ULA. And even if I had, so I would probably not um, just put it in without further testing, which, well, gives me the chance to switch to the Acon Electron, uh, which was supposed to be on the desk for today. And let's see if we can have some progress on the other one. So let's reconnect all that stuff. And add back the screws. Maybe clean out the socket with some IPA. Well, I remember that I did so, and uh, I, I cleaned the ULA as well. And um, this is in, in, in many different ways with I, I, IPA and uh, with a contact cleaner and uh, a couple of different methods, but um, it never changed anything on this result. Nope. Well, I think it's the other way around. No, no, probably it's fit. It fits. So, well then, uh, that's going to be uh, level two then. Sometimes getting this one back to life. And it would be good to know whether it is safe to add a known good ULA to this device or if there are any other faults on the board which may have caused the issue for the ULA uh, because, well, they are really almost impossible to get as a spare part. So actually there's just one chance to get a working Acorn Electron and get the ULA from this one, but uh, well, then I can keep the working Acorn Electron and <laughs> just skip the part. So let's pretend nothing has happened for the last 35 minutes or so. And uh, let's see what this unit is doing. So let's connect this. Let's switch to some HDMI view. Let's connect the power. No sync? No? Oh, wrong input. Uh, well, it looks different, but <laughs> not as uh, we expect this to look, but uh, actually... Uh, 
that's well that was actually the issue i want to fix and then uh, well let's go through the same steps and see what we can find out That the ULA was basically a, a good idea by Acon uh, because they were looking for a way to create a very uh, compact computer which was actually planned cheap to produce and uh, so they came up with the idea to cram as much uh, functionality into uh, one I see as possible, but exactly this has caused way more troubles than um, they solved with it. And uh, they had to postpone the uh, production start and uh, they couldn't deliver as much units as they have uh, sold. And uh, that was a very, very sad story. And uh, therefore they lost some sort of uh, advantage they had because the idea was indeed to be a bit cheaper or at least in almost the same price range like uh, the Commodore devices for example just some tea and here we can see it looks completely different <laughs> and um, it looks indeed very different. So this area looks very um, different as well. So we had a an empty, uh, not socket, but an empty place for an IC on the other one. I just uh, closed the case already, otherwise we could have a look at it. But, um, well, I mean the screws are anyway a bit too loose. But now let's stay focused on getting this one fixed. So, um, then, well, we have to move back to the service manual and uh, check the very same stuff we've checked already. And the first thing was this whole story about the power supply. So let's go for this, if we have any issues here. Oh. Pretty. Tough connector, and it's a different one, as we can see here. Power, voltage, DC. And oh, I can't see it anymore because I have changed the zoom level. And we got some glare on it. That's something, always something that isn't working the way we want. Five volts, that's fine. Minus almost five volts. I think close enough. And then uh, we had to check voltage with some load on it. So let's connect this and check 5 volts again. Yep, looks fine to me. So, ah, we had to measure the current. Let's measure the current. I think that's going to be fine as well because we see an image. So it's not that the uh, PSU is breaking down completely. But, just to be on the safe side, come on. We got 0.4 ampere 
And this is actually not enough. That's interesting. That's really interesting. So, hmm, maybe the later revision draw less current than the earlier one, or well, drawing less power is or less current is actually, at least in the Commodore world, a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> because that whole thing isn't burning at all, but uh, that it is just half of the value mentioned in the service manual is indeed surprising. Burn is less than 700 milliampere. Look for broken traces. Look for and correct open circuit on main PCB. Is voltage zero? Nope. Voltage between red and black leads is okay. Current is not zero. That's okay. It is just a little bit low. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So, let's see some activity at the chat. Yep, I heard that these sockets sometimes can be a problem, more likely a dead ULA. Is the ULA soldered down? Uh, which one? <laughs> the one we were looking at uh, a couple of minutes ago. And it was uh, just placed into the socket. Slightly different video output circuit on the Rev6 board soldered ULA. Not sure if that was because of earlier socket problems or cost saving. I believe the ULA change was cost saving. It also reflected a change in design towards subboards. Some Rev6 have the RAM on a subboard and the onboard RAM unpopulated. Interesting. Okay. But it looks like we got all the RAM ICs in place. So, well. Let's reconnect that. And I think we have to move on to... Ah, the next was the 16 megahertz check. So, going to need this one anytime soon. Where's my probe? Yeah. This is close. This is not going to work. So let's move back to this connection here. And pin 49. So I think we need some power for this check. And I assume that's 51, 50, 49. There's nothing. Why is there nothing? Okay. So is 16 megahertz 4 volt peak to peak on pin 8? I see 8. I see 8. Where is it? Oh, on the other side of the board. Okay. So I have to move my ground connection. I 
Yes, that's going to be ground here. And uh, we have to measure pin 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, here we got some 16 megahertz, 3.84 volt peak to peak. Find broken track between IC8 and IC1. Haha, <laughs> okay. That's a statement. This is just across the whole board, so it's indeed a walk in the park, ironically. Come on, give up. Nope. What? Why not? Oh, damn it. That's what I call a connection. Oh. Oh. So if you're going for handing down a broken trace, I think we're going to need some comfortable magnification. Let's see if I can get my lens in place. And we have to start on the bottom of the board. And it's going to be that's going to be tricky. So that's the IC we talk about. That's 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 pin eight. So the trace goes to here. So power supply is disconnected, that's fine. So first check done. Then we're going to change sides. And we are here, and the trace is going down to, uh, uh, well, that's going to be funny. It's below this IC. Let's check if there is a place where this may end up. Going from here all the way up to here. And then that's the first trace. Ah no, it's take it making making a sharp turn here. And then it is supposed to be the upper one here. Damn it, that's really hard to spot. It's the third from the top. So it's making some nice turns here and it is ending up here. Okay, let's check this. That's fine. So at least we found the right trace, that's good. And then it's probably just crossing underneath this IC to reach this point here. That's fine too. Let's measure from pin 8 to here. 
it's totally fine. Then it's moving on to pin here. That's fine too. That's the third pin from the bottom. And this has no connection to the bottom of the PCB. So it looks like the signal got stuck somewhere in this IC here. Because the trace ends here. But both of them are doing something. It's an SN74ALS16, SN74S. So these are uh, some, some kind of uh, logic ICs I have to look up on the internet what they actually actually doing and um, pin 49 let's trace pin 49 back where well, it is uh, 49 it's actually on this side 49 supposed to be this one has no connection on the bottom of the ECB, but on the top. So I assume. Nope. That's strange, isn't it? Fifty one, fifty forty nine. This one has no trace on or track. They call it track on there. Yes, track on the bottom. But I can't see it on the top either. That's supposed to be this pin. And this is uh, connected to. Hmm. Which trace? <laughs> we just we can we just can guess. So closest I would say is this one. And it appears to be right. And then we move up to here. Which is right as well. And this is Going, oh my goodness. Second from the bottom over here to here. And here we got lost. Oh, so this trace got lost just below this IC. It may cross through it. That could be just to end up here. And here we don't know what it is doing. It may go back all the way to here. But that's actually not what we are looking for. The issue is that uh, the signal got lost somewhere in between here. Which is indeed rather strange. So we learned that um, Sorry if I can't adjust the view all the time. <laughs> but the signal has to go through this uh, rectifier. But I have actually no idea where it is coming from. So 
we got it here as well. But this is actually, I think, not going through the board. Oh, it is, yes. I think it is. And that's the bottom dot here. And this is connected to here. Yeah, that's fine. So And if it is connected to there. What I'm actually missing is the connection between those ICs and uh, pin 49. So what we learned so far is that we end up at pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 58. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one. Fine. So these two pins are connected by this rectifier. But then it more or less got lost. So let's check the rectifier. It has some hidden connection on the bottom of this board. So we got two pins side by side and the inner ones is actually the rectifier, this one. So this and this. Yep, it is working. to here and here we have another capacitor that's fine too and this capacitor is connected to ground okay that's probably to smooth out some signal but maybe the capacitor is broken So let's try to see one microfarad. Okay. We're going to remove this and replace this with another one. We can see a change. So. That's the point where things got a bit noisy. Chance to drink some drink something in tea. And in the meantime, I can look for my capacitor box. If I have something like this. Or if we have to check some spare part boxes of my C64s. And even figure out the values of those things. Very strange stuff. I think that's not going to help. So we may have to check a different set of boxes. I 
we can find something that it is quite similar. And even read what's written on it. So, oh. so let's see. Yeah, get the right one. Us drawing a lot of heat from it. That's the typical things to ground connecting in issue that ground always requires so much heat on these old boards. Oh, it's not, not even melding. Heating. Nope. Even started to get warm on my finger already. Nope, it won't. It has removed a bit of it, but not completely. So we may have to do this a bit differently then. So, a good place to stabilize the board a bit. Let's move this out of the way for a moment. I'm sorry for being off screen for a moment, but um, this is a bit more complicated than I was expecting it to be. Now we got it. Okay. So I was essentially just uh, using my desoldering gun on one side and the soldering iron on the other side just to heat it up from two sides. Also, tricky thing is that uh, if you do not do this quite carefully, then you may break some traces while desoldering it, and that's not what we want. So, uh, capacity check. Actually, my measurement device is capable of doing so, but it requires a bit more, a bit longer uh, legs to do so. I think that's not going to work via the wires here. And that was
This is so small, damn it. One microfarad. Surprises me a bit to see this. So let's check. Um, that's C8. And C8 is supposed to be... Can't find it. Ah, oh, next page. C eight and nine capacitor one microfarad thirty. Five volt. Okay, so let me check whether I can find one in my boxes. Otherwise, we may just harvest this from the other ACOM. One microfarad doesn't sound so uncommon we can find something I need to change glasses it's so small one hundred four ah let me check oops Stuck somewhere. Uh, 104 is 0 0.1 microfarad. That's too small. So we need something with some more. Ten microfarad. Mm. I think green stuff isn't helping. Another three is even smaller than this. Oh, it looks like this box isn't helping. Or you need either 105 or something that simply says one microfarad. But, well, I remember something. It had a different measuring de device, so maybe. Let's do use this one and check the one we have desoldered right now. Was it this one? Yep. That's perfectly fine, one 
microfarad. So it's probably not the capacitor. Hmm. Would have been nice. So we do not need to search for another one. We have to search for another reason why it isn't working. Ah, so. Then it could be the rectifier, maybe, that this is actually the problem. I'm not sure whether we can measure it on board or if we have to remove it in order to get some reliable values. Let's give it a try. Four point six volt. Looks quite fine to me. So But the service manual isn't really helping with this. Back pin 8 of AC8. This is what we have done already. Check that there is 5 volt across pin 14 and pin 7 ground of IC8. I really assume that the problem origins from here but uh, we've already made our way through the whole board so let's bring this little guy back to where it belongs come on Nice and cozy here, so don't be so reluctant. All ring material. Yep, looks fine. So I think there is no trace plan or something like this inside the manual. Notes, nope. Keyboard matrix, power supply,
main PCB silk screen. Uh, and what we are looking for. Main PCB layout. Here we go. So There's supposed to be something that looks like an oscillator. IC8 is here. IC8. Flip flops. C8, 18 and 9, I see 9. You are measuring pin 8, okay. Where's pin 8 coming from? I think I'm looking in the wrong place. Other side. Forty nine. Can't find it. Look here. Here we got a line. Odd clock. <laughs> I really cut it half and half this uh <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's coming from here. But lock pin two, but that's not right. It's really it's really sad that they had the drawing as exactly at the point where we don't where we, we need it. So I may have to Look up online for a better circuit plan or so. This is just VC. Yeah, that's the only place where they mentioned that this uh, clock connection with an unknown pin number but it's supposed to be 49 is connected to an IC with no name so a pin where which we can't read it could be an 8 I have no idea oh 
also it really looks like we are missing a few millimeters here in this uh, sort of scan. Well, it's a bit sad that we get stuck at this point because the thing I had in mind was that we may check activities on the, the RAMs, for example, and uh, Confuses me a bit that uh, we can trace the signal up to here, but uh, I can't find the connection between pin 49 and where the clock signal is supposed to be arrive. And um, I mean, there is there's one soldering point that looks a bit weak to me. So we may just resolder all those logic ICs here. Let's see if this is going to change something. And then I think um well that's that's not going to happen today. <laughs> I may have to uh, write out all those uh, pins and connection, I have to find the uh, all the logic gates of these ICs and draw out where they are supposed to be connected to, just to figure out what this, this corner is doing here right now. So this is what really puzzles me a bit. Because this is exactly missing in the manual. So this part, I can't even spot this rectifier. It's supposed to be there somewhere. And maybe what we have to keep in mind is that I may look at a wrong revision of this circuit plan anyway. So it could be that um, they have changed something and uh, therefore this isn't going to help. Well then let's say um, last attempt resolve all those logic ICs and uh, see if this is going to change something. And then it's going to be a bit tedious to figure out what's connected to what here on this board. I still expect that we have somewhere an issue with the RAMs, but uh, it puzzles me a bit that we do not have clock on the ULA. Because the strange thing is that actually the the electron is, is doing something. We see something on the screen. So I think the UA is really trying to uh, to start, but got stuck some stuck somewhere.
There's a lot of old flux in these soldering points. You can see this if you heat this up and it starts to boil a little bit before you have touched it with a new solder material, then um, you really rushed those boards through the soldering buffs. Which is not uncommon because you want to keep the time the whole board with all the components is opposed to heat as low as possible. I'm actually not even sure whether maybe someone or it was during the production. It looks like they have soldered the ULA separately or maybe someone did this already during a repair attempt or so. Because the soldering looks different. There's some remaining flux around the solder points and some are really, really weak soldered. I'm not sure whether you can see this, but there are some, they look like uh, they haven't got as much soldering material as they may should have needed or may, they, they, they need actually. So. Pimp up this a little bit. Oh, it's smelly. Old flax. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's see if something has changed. So, uh, as far as I know, we need a keyboard, otherwise it won't start anyway. If it stopped working after transit, I would give reflow a go sometime. Great effort. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think I, I may have to go through this and uh, resolder most of the points. So. Usually I say resoldering uh, a board like this is something you can do during a long dark winter night, but uh, well, <laughs> winter is almost over. And I don't want to wait for the next one, so I may have to do this uh, anytime soon. So let's see if something has changed. Bring my focus back. Nope. 
at least it is still doing something. So we haven't screwed up completely, but it's not doing what we expect to do. Anyway, I think um, I call this quit for today. It's actually not leading in the direction I want to go. I really have to check the circuit plan, whether I'm actually looking at the correct one or if this is supposed to be a different revision, then I really have to fix the issue with this part that's missing here. Uh, because I think this is where we have to look at. And uh, I may have to um, check the internet for known symptoms of the electron. I think this white bar um, issue is quite common for broken archons. I'm not going to say for archons at all, <laughs> or for electrons at all, but for broken ones. So uh, maybe I can find some more suggestions what I should try to check and then uh, I'm not giving up. That's not an option. We're going to get this thing back to life and um, I may have to get a couple of uh, in the ref3 advanced user guide. I, che I just checked. Um, do I miss something? Starter test issue six circuit diagram. Oh, okay. Then I have to check the, this. Uh, I think um, I have to be member of this, so I'm not sure whether I did so already or uh, I was I was attempting to connect to the board, but I think I failed by whatsoever reason. But that's something I have to that that should be fixable. So then thanks. Rock for mentioning this. Is it pronounced correctly? I have no idea. Probably not. <laughs> it's more a soft G at the end. Rog. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, well, thanks a lot for joining. Thanks a lot for comments and uh, suggestions. And thanks for going through this together. And um, Short for Roger. Okay, thanks. Learned something. And um, I'm probably not coming back to this next weekend because then I'm going to be uh, on on uh, on traveling a bit, and uh, I might not get to it over the week because usually at the evening I'm simply too tired to work on things like this and um, I've I've tried this in the past to do videos at um, workday nights and it hasn't worked out very well so I stopped doing this <laughs> and uh, therefore I will I will do some research I will do some homework and uh, probably I'll come back to this in uh, not even two weeks time but three weeks time but um, I mean, this stuff is already more than 30 years old. Who cares about weeks? So, <laughs> well, then thanks to all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, being active in the chat. And uh, feel free to suggest any ideas you come up with uh, in the comment section or on Twitter, where you can find me quite easily as well. And uh, have a nice remaining Sunday and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.